political leader of the United National Congress, Mrs. Kamala Prasad Bisesa, my fellow speakers, good night to all our viewers out there. Tonight is about the child you see on the screen. Can I get my picture up, please? Is about this child that you see here. I want you to meet Nashik Nagasa. His third birthday is going to be on the 4th of April in the next 28 days. And as you will know, as you have seen here, every year Nakish father, Rishi Nagasa, takes a photo very similar to this one with his son. His birthday is celebrated every week for one month prior to the birthday. For the next year, we will not have that photo. The mother will not have that photo. This year would be none. Thanks to one person, and I am saying one person, Minister Stuart Young. And the most insane board and the most insane management team at Paria, Mr. Mustaq Mohammed, Mr. Colin Piper, Mr. Newman George, Mr. Michael Wee. And because I was directly involved from Saturday morning straight on until Monday night at 11, I can stand here today to tell the nation what went on. On Friday when the news came, at 2 p.m., Rishi and four other divers what some people describe, and I cannot say if it's that or not, Delta P. And they must have been praying to God when they realized what has happened, that somebody is going to come and get them. Rishi and all the divers knew that one person got out. So we know that deep down inside, they knew that somebody was coming back for them because they were a team of certified international divers. But little did they know that on that very day, after one diver was saved, the rest of the divers that were coming for them would be forbidden, forbidden to go near that pipe. And that was an instruction that was given. The one diver that went down and rescued Mr. Christopher Budram was diver Michael Kurban, the son and may I say it again, the son of Mr. Faisal Kurban and Faisal eight houses away from me. Hence the reason our connection. The heart of Trinidad and Tobago stopped when the news came over that four divers were in a pipeline fighting for their lives. No one knew what had happened to them as yet. The torment and the lies that followed from Friday night straight on until Monday at 11 p.m. was very shocking to a lot of us who were standing right there and witnessing this unfold before our eyes. We all sat in a dirty, rat-ridden shed, a bus shed that was condemned more than 10 years ago. A bus shed in that point to pair car park that's used to house employees when the bus comes to pick them up and take them to their destination. There were no trauma counselors, as the minister indicated, that came to us. We were there from quarter to five on, a, on mornings, straight on to about minutes after 11, every single night until Monday night. There were no water offered to us. There were no facilities offered to the family. Nothing. Zero. And I keep saying that. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. All media conferences that we witnessed, which was played for the entire assembly at that car park, was played on speakers so we can hear what the minister was saying. The families, the wives were just there crying in tears because it was all lies. Nothing 
of what was said was being done. There was one meeting with the family, and the minister promised every stop would be removed to save those divers. And the minister had no excuse, and neither did the board, no excuse whatsoever not to do what he said, because if he didn't know what was going on, he heard the plea from all of the live stream where we were begging him, asking him, let us help. We brought the divers, we had the equipment, we had the fishing associations from both Point of Pier and Cali Bay with their little vessels ready to take the divers out. They needed to do nothing except say, go ahead and save those guys. And nothing was done. We continued to plea and plea and plea with the minister, with the government on this. We heard a press conference where the minister indicated that the families would be moved to much more comfortable environments, and it wasn't done. The bodies were moved again from another gate and moved through the back. The neglect and the inhumane action by this board has cost us lives, fathers, sons, husbands, and many other things that these gentlemen were to many people in this country and within their area. We ask why, why, what are we witnessing here again? It's been a year since we had the Angela Barrett really gruesome murder. What is going on? It is a simple answer as an administration that does not care about their people. We had a minister whose children exposed themselves on Facebook with guns. We also had a country that was shut down to find a cellular phone. But yet still, on this weekend, we could not save four lives. Trinidad and Tobago, wake up and ask yourselves, who is going to be next? Is it going to be my son, my daughter, my wife, my husband? All of this lies in your hands. And for the youths out there, and I'm calling out the youths, this is your country now, your time. Decide if this is what you want to live in or this is not what you want to live in. You have a choice. Take charge of what has happened here. Most of the youths that I met in Palmis from the university indicated and used the terminology, not me, they did, this is corporate murder. And I want to say it makes a lot of sense what they have said. And I want to appeal to Trinidad and Tobago, do not let this die a natural death. So again, I would like to thank you, Trinidad and Tobago. We look forward to your support, and we want you to continue to support these families. Good night. This revolution is about restoring our...